Hi everybody! A few years ago I made a video tutorial how to get started with the Yocto project and open embedded on Raspberry Pi. Over the years things have changed and now we have Raspberry Pi 5. So in this video tutorial I'm gonna explain you again how to start with the Yocto project and open embedded using the long-term support with this ScarpGov on this Raspberry Pi 5. The required hardware for this demonstration includes Raspberry Pi 5, a micro SD card, an appropriate USB-C power supply and Raspberry Pi debug probe which I'm going to use for UART serial communication uh, with a computer. If you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi debug probe, please have a look at my longer video which explores it in details. It is a great tool for embedded development. The Yocto project is a collaborative project of the Linux Foundation that uses the open embedded build framework and the build took Bitbake. It provides Pocky, a reference distribution that we're gonna use in this video. Uh, the Yocto project has a steep learning curve. Uh, basically, you need very good understanding of how Linux distributions work in general, as well as very good command of the Git version control system. Because of this, the Yocto project is not for anyone. It is basically for people interested in building optimized Linux distribution and because of this it is primarily used for industrial customers. On a PC with Intel i7 CPU I'm going to cross compile a Linux distribution for Raspberry Pi 5 using the Yocto project. The first step is to open a terminal on this PC and clone Pocky. As I mentioned previously this is the reference distribution of the Yocto project. It's available in a git repository and there are different branches for the different releases of the Yocto project. In this particular case I'm using ScarpGov, the long-term support release as of the moment. The Yocto project and Open Embedded are very powerful and flexible because they provide metadata organized in layers. Basically, uh, these layers are directories with a bunch of configuration files, most importantly, recipes which have the exact steps how to build a specific package. Uh, in order to build a distribution for a specific hardware, we need the so-called board support package layer. And for Raspberry Pi 5, we're going to use the community maintained Meta Raspberry Pi. I'm a contributor to this layer. Using the cd command, I'm going to enter the directory to which I have just downloaded Pocky. After that, I'm going to use again the git clone command to download the source code provided by the Meta Raspberry Pi BSP layer. This layer is hosted in GitHub and um, the different branches have the names for the specific Yocto releases. As I mentioned on several occasions now, this demonstration is based on ScarpGov, the latest um, uh, long-term support release for the Yocto project as of the moment. After that, I'm gonna execute the command source OE init build anova. Basically, this is a script that creates the build environment in which I'm going to use the bitbake tool to build my image. This command generated the conf directory in which we have two very important files bblayers.conf and loco.conf. Using the bitbake layers command with add layer argument, I'm going to add Meta Raspberry Pi BSP layer to the bblayers.conf. By the way, all the commands that you see are also available in the description of the video, so you can just copy and paste them. Using the cat command, I quickly outputted the content of the bblayer.conf file to make sure that the Meta Raspberry Pi layer has been successfully added. The next step is using your favorite text editor to append three lines to the bottom of fileconf slash local.conf. Um, I prefer using Vim, so here are the th three lines. The first line sets the machine to Raspberry Pi 5. The second line switches to systemd as init manager. And the third line accepts licenses needed for the binary blobs for Raspberry Pi 5. This is required because of the Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi firmware drivers on Raspberry Pi. Building an image from scratch with Bitbake for the first time takes a significant amount of time depending on your internet connectivity and the technical capabilities of the personal computer on which you are cross-compiling the distribution. In our case, we are cross-compiling it for Raspberry Pi 5. 
Pocket, a reference distribution of the Yocto project, provides several images out of the box. One of them is core image base. So to build it, I'm typing in bitbake space core image base. Unfortunately, I had a problem. User namespaces are not usable by Bitbake because of AppArmor. I run into this situation because I'm using Ubuntu 24.04, which is an LTS release, and the Yocto project ScarpGov, which is also a long-term support release of the Yocto project. However, ScarpGov is supposed to be used with Ubuntu 22.04, and on the newer version, 24.04, four, I have this error. The fix is pretty straightforward and simple. Just disable this restriction in App Armor using a persistent setting. After applying this fix, the PC has to be rebooted. However, with the solution, you can successfully use Ubuntu 2404 with uh, the Yocto project's CarbGov and build any images. So after rebooting the PC, I open again a terminal, went to the same directory that I was using uh, to build Pocky, uh, run again the source command, and finally I run again bitbake core image base. This time the command was executed successfully and the build was started. Building even a simple image as core image base requires executing more than 5,000 different tasks. Bitbake is going through the different recipes, fetching the source code, unpacking it if it's archived, after that cross-compiling it for Raspberry Pi 5, and so on and so on and so on. There are so many different tasks that has to be executed, and this takes a huge amount of time. I recommend you to have at least 100 gigabytes of free disk space if you're planning to build a distribution from scratch using Core Image Base as I'm doing it here. So while Bitbake is running, you can go outside to enjoy the weather, or if it's too cold, to stay inside and grab a cup of tea. I live in Poldiv, Bulgaria, and we had quite a lot of snow in January 2025. In the meantime, Bitbake was successfully processing different tasks on my computer. Keep in mind that the total build time depends on your internet connection speed, because you have to download a lot of source code, and it also depends on the hardware capabilities of your PC. Uh, most of the time, your CPU will be loaded at 100%, so make sure that you have a good cooling for the CPU. With a sense of humor, I can say that Bitbake and my PC keep me warm during the cold winter days. Thanks to the magic of video editing, we can fast forward, skip all the boring parts and go to the last tasks of Bitbake, uh, like do root FS. After finalizing all these tasks, we'll have an image that we can flash on a micro SD card. Finally, when Bitbake successfully completes the building process, we'll have an image that we have to flash on a micro SD card and boot it on Raspberry Pi 5. Upon success, Bitbake will output the image files in temp slash deploy slash images slash the name of the machine, in our case Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, there is an, a file called core image base raspberry pi 5.rootfs.wic.bz2. It's a symbolic link to the actual file that has been uh, produced by Bitbake. We're going to use the bz cut command uh, combined with dd to flush it on a micro SD card. Be very careful on this tab because if you make a mistake, you can accidentally wipe out the drive on your PC instead of the micro SD card. If you are not feeling that confident in a command line terminal, you can instead use a graphical user interface application such as Balena Etcher. Now it's time to play a little bit with the hardware that we have. Plug the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi 5, attach the Raspberry Pi debug probe to the dedicated UART connector on Raspberry Pi 5. It is located between the two micro HDMI connectors. Core image base is a very simple image. It does not have a graphical user interface. So instead of attaching a monitor and a keyboard, I'll use just the uh, serial communication, which by the way, for Raspberry Pi 5 specifically, is enabled by default. This is not the case for previous Raspberry Pi models and versions. So if you're using Raspberry Pi 4 or older, you have to enable the UART communication in your local.conf. On it, I opened a terminal and I executed the screen command to make serial communication between the Raspberry Pi 5 and the laptop. I explained how to use the Raspberry Pi debug probe for serial communication with Raspberry Pi 5 in another longer video, so please have a look at it if you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi debug probe. 
The Raspberry Pi 5 boots automatically as soon as I plug the USB-C power supply. It boots from the micro SD card, so we are booting the Pocky distribution that we have just built and flash on this micro SD card. After successfully uh, loading our Linux distribution on Raspberry Pi 5, I can log in as root, there is no password. And as you can see in the video, I'm executing some very basic commands just to make sure that the system works as expected, uh, to check the Linux kernel version that we're running on the Raspberry Pi 5 and so on. Very basic things, uh, don't expect too much out of core image base, it's a very simple image as I told you. In next videos we're gonna extend it and add more applications and do more demonstrations. Please ask any questions in the comments below and uh, give me some ideas what kind of tutorials would you like to see on Raspberry Pi 5 with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Although the Yocto project and Open Embedded have a steep learning curve, things are getting better through the years and as you can see now it's quite easy to get started and build an image for Raspberry Pi 5 or any other Raspberry Pi model or version. If you like this type of content please consider subscribing, leave a comment below if you want to see more video tutorials about the Yocto project, hit the like button and stay tuned for new videos.